see quite a number of people uh, this time of the day uh, when there's so many interesting Fedora talks. Uh, so thank you for coming. Uh, as, uh, as I was uh, introduced, I worked on uh, Network Manager. I work currently on, uh, on some upstream stuff as well. But this talk will be about something totally different and more or less unrelated. Uh, I will be talking about name resolution in Linux, which is, which is uh, uh, quite uh, useful for all sorts, of, uh, all sorts of use cases, all sorts of applications. And uh, I usually just come to conferences and uh, talk about stuff that does not work for me. So this will be the case once again. And I also try to come out with some solutions. So that's, that's, uh, that's the topic here. So for the beginning, um, we should see some uh, actual use cases for network name resolution. Uh, the very, very most common one is to connect to some services. And there's also uh, the possibility to uh, bind to addresses uh, specified uh, not by the exact ad address, but by name. Uh, there are quite often use cases when you want to uh, build some uh, IP-based uh, access list, access filters. And those IPs you get from DNS as well. So that's, that's also sometimes used. And sometimes you just need to get more information about hosts, uh, sometimes even about users. And, and it's, it's uh, pretty much broad. Uh, so it's hard to concentrate on one thing. It's hard to uh, specify the name resolution properly. And we'll see just uh, some of the use cases uh, that uh, I uh, see regularly. Uh, so it's possible that you will see use cases that I don't cover. I will be happy to learn about them. And we can, we can work with that. So how does it currently work in Linux and glibc? Uh, I'm taking the two main use cases, or the connect is the really, really primary one. And you need to feed uh, those uh, library or system calls with something uh, you, get, you get from uh, the network. The something is. Uh, Addresses, we'll be talking about the details later. Uh, but you need to get the addresses somewhere. You need to use some service to translate the names into addresses. Uh, so currently, uh, you are asking get address info, which is a function in glibc. There are a couple of other functions as well. But this is really uh, the most important one. Uh, that one's talking to name service switch, which, which is uh, an internal component of glibc. And that one has plugins. So you can ask multiple sources. And the way it works is uh, pretty easy. Or if you look at the code, pretty much complicated, because uh, the code is very old and stuffed with uh, lots of, I would say, today useless things, because uh, just nobody wants to dig into it uh, as, it, as it's so. so uh, so much more difficult than, than the problem is. So um, I said I identified uh, some problems with the name resolution. So in, in this area, um, there I see what's not, not covered by this diagram, uh, places where something breaks. Uh, for me, the primary problems of glibc name resolution uh, is uh, that you have only limited uh, input parameters you can give, and you are getting limited output parameters from the name resolution. So there's information you would like to give to the resolver, so it uh, resolves for you properly. And there's information you would like to learn, and y you don't. Uh, also, uh, it's uh, pretty hard to use uh, name resolution as uh, in uh, get this info in a modern application or modern uh, server application. It doesn't matter what it is. Uh, because uh, the call to get this info is essentially blocking. You call the function, 
name resolution takes place, and then uh, it returns with results or without. Sure. Sure. So let's, thank you. Let's go to the input uh, arguments you give to get address info. It's basically uh, the host name, or in the standards it's called node name. Uh, it's the service name. So uh, you can use this function to resolve services as well as hosts. And you also give some, some more information in a special structure. Uh, there are more attributes than, than you see here, uh, but I wrote down all the attributes that are actually used by, uh, by the input stuff. Because the same structure is used for input and output. And basically, input and output uh, does not use the same fields. Uh, you can specify the address family. So typically you don't want to. Typically you want to uh, resolve uh, as uh, in a dual stack network. Uh, but sometimes you may want to limit your resolution to IPv4 or IPv6. Uh, that is usually done uh, if you want to either overcome some network problem with uh, some tools where you can uh, specify like command line tools with minus four and minus six uh, switches or it's uh, often used in applications that want to do something fancy uh, with the IPv4 and IPv6 addresses. So they do the resolution in parallel, call get address info in two threads, uh, one for IPv4, uh, the other for IPv6. Uh, this is one of the things that uh, I would like to avoid. Uh, so you can use a library function that will do all of the stuff you need for, for you, and you only pick up the result. So this is for the input parameters uh, that are there. Uh, there's just examples uh, of something, something I'm missing there. Um, the address family is there, but has some problems. Um, it's uh, quite detailed because uh, I can just get back quickly. Uh, in the NS switch, uh, there is a number of APIs, and some of the APIs uh, support some of the attributes on input or output, and some support others. And there is none that would cover like all of them, none that would uh, succeed, succeed all of the existing ones. Uh, there's no uh, security options. Uh, for example, I could imagine that I would say that I would want to receive all, uh, all answers even when using DNSSEC, even when those answers are, uh, are invalid as per the local DNS resolver and validator. Uh, I would also like to specify that uh, the resolver should use DSRV records. Uh, typically, if you have a resolver that does not use uh, uh, those known input uh, attributes, but uh, resolves DNS directly, you can do that. But again, you, you do it uh, in the application. So my, uh, my view is uh, that uh, you would just say node name, serve name. Uh, for SRV records, you need to specify also uh, the protocol, like TCP or UDP. And then it does all, all that work. Everyone knows uh, what SRV records are for. Or is there anyone who doesn't? Uh, OK, uh, basically, uh, you can have uh, a domain name. Uh, and if you uh, prepend it with uh, uh, TCP or UDP and uh, some, uh, uh, some service name, like, let's say, I don't know, where is it? SIP, XMPP client, XMPP server, name of the service. And you can look up that name in DNS for SRV record, which says uh, which server uh, uh, does that. It has some fancy stuff like uh, if you can return multiple servers for, for one service, you can return priority. And uh, if some of them are same, same priority, you can return even weight, with which uh, with, with, uh, makes the choice uh, more flexible. 
I'm not going to talk about Asavi records uh, more. It's uh, it's uh, on the internet, so that's that's not a problem to find more details and examples. Uh, so let's go for input parameters that are there, but uh, don't work, let's say, to my expectation, because sometimes uh, sometimes it's up to debate, sometimes it's pretty clear. Um, there's the first one, AI address config, uh, which um, was created so that when connecting to services, you can ignore uh, IPv6 or IPv4 addresses based on the configuration of the system. There's some specification of it in POSIX, which is uh, pretty much useless. There's some specification of it in, in some RFCs, which is uh, not only useless, but also uh, pretty much breaks uh, some stuff like localhost and link local addresses and so on. Um, it goes uh, so far that uh, if you have a system where you don't have uh, any IPv4 address, except localhost, which is not counted in, in uh, that filtering. And uh, you call get address info and you say resolve for, for me 127.0.0.1. You can do that because uh, you can just fill strings of addresses uh, into get address info and it will return the data structures. But in that case, it will fail because uh, you're not supposed to connect to IPv4 if you don't have IPv4 addresses. So that is, that is something that was designed with a good will, but uh, the actual implementations uh, don't really do what's, uh, what's necessary. So this, this is one of the things uh, I, was, I was researching on and I was, I was trying to fix. Um, also, uh, get address info was said to be replacing all of the old functions like get host by name, which, by the way, does not do services, and uh, get, uh, service, uh, get service by name, which just translates uh, the name of services according to uh, slash etc slash services file, where you have like HTTP uh, on TCP port 80 and stuff like that. So you can, you can use, uh, if I go back, uh, the serve name can be a port number in a string or it can be a symbolic name Good. Um, so when serve name is uh, null, that means you want to do what get host by name did. Basically, translate the name to an IP address or a list of IP addresses and be done. No services, nothing like that. Uh, but uh, get this info in that case uh, uh, picks up just uh, the services it, it, can, it can create on protocols it knows. So you get one address with a TCP stream, then the same address with UDP datagram. Uh, basically, you get duplicate results. Um, if some of, the, some of the problems I'm talking about are not clear to you, um, then you can simply uh, look at the bugzilla of glibc and look for bugs that contain the word get this info and you will find more detailed uh, descriptions there because sometimes uh, if I say it in, in just a couple of sentences, uh, it's, it's too quick and there are like, detailed descriptions, comments, and so on, so you can, you can see all the stuff there. Um, on the other hand, uh, if you use a null node name, it may, uh, it may uh, actually mean that you want to just uh, resolve the service like get service by name, which is not not uh, uh, not supposed to be used in, in the new world with get this info and all this stuff. Uh, but also it may mean you want to use uh, the AI passive flag and you want to bind to the local addresses. So basically, uh, with get this info, you're not, not supposed to ever need to uh, use any other functions working with addresses because uh, you can just feed the address info with the string specification and be done with that. And one of the valid specifications is also null. So in that case, uh, you expect it to listen on uh, addresses 
like 0.0.0.0 .0 .0 .0 or uh, IPv6 zero, all, all zeros. And this is uh, usually called the NA address in this case. So the service wants to listen uh, on all interfaces for uh, requests coming to all local addresses. Um, in Linux, uh, that is done by listening to either both IPv4 and IPv6 zeros, or uh, if you have an option which is usually by default, that the IPv6 uh, socket can handle IPv4 as well, then you should only bind to the IPv6 one. This call re first returns the IPv4 one, so if you blindly uh, trust what Git this info gives you, uh, you just connect uh, the first socket to the IPv4 one, and the second socket fails because the IPv6 wants to connect to the IPv4 as well, which is the default, and that should be fixed as well. Uh, it's also uh, in the bugzilla, so for more details, uh, you, can, you can see there. There are quite a number of bugs, so I'll pick a good evening for that, or whole day, because there's like, I don't know, 30, and uh, some of them I don't even know uh, yet, because I wanted to look at it, but there are some, some new ones. And um, the default flags are actually very funny, because uh, AI address config, it's quite, yeah, okay, by default you want to connect to services. That's uh, sort of reasonable. I don't agree with that entirely, but, uh, but I, can see, I can see the sense. But there's also AI all, which only makes sense with some other flag. So you have one default flag used, and it depends on some other flag that's not there. It's, uh, it's just, just a small bug. It's, you actually, with get this info, you almost never use the default. Because you have to supply the, the whole, instead of the whole structure, you have to supply null and then you're using the default, and you almost never do that, because you need to specify some of the other options. So let's go to the output. Um, it's hard to draw a diagram for that, because uh, the canonical name is actually uh, returned as part of the structure, but only in the first instance. So I'm Drawing it separately, uh, but uh, the rest is just uh, just normal structures. Uh, structure address info is specific to get address info. Uh, you already see some of some of the stuff uh, before, but now even the address structure is filled in. The family is just duplicate. It's not a problem. Um, Flow info is only there for IPv6. Scope ID is only there for IPv6. They call it scope ID. Actually, it's uh, IF index. It's, it's the index of, of the interface, uh, um, but it's used only for link local addresses. Uh, just curious, um, is there anyone who doesn't know what IPv6 link local addresses can, can be used for, or what it? OK, OK, OK. Uh, IPv6 link local addresses are automatically ass assigned uh, on Linux. It's done by the kernel, and you can use them just for uh, link local communication. And they actually don't use uh, the routing table in the, in the usual way uh, because they're in the same prefix for every interface. Uh, there are also IPv4 link local. Link local. Uh, if you ever saw... Um, or was it 169.250 something? I don't know. Uh, it's it serves the same purpose. But in IPv6, it's uh, it's pretty much uh, solid already, and it's used uh, by some of the base protocols. Basically, the scope ID uh, is needed so that you can route it through the correct interface. You need it in the structure. Sure. Yes. Yes. It's also sometimes called so. That's the thing that catches you when you first try and study IPv6 is that you can't understand why you have to specify the interface. It's only understand uh, when you understand because it's linked local. Yeah, 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 yeah. That link, therefore, you have to specify the interface attached to that link. Yeah, exactly. Because otherwise, you can have multiple interfaces, the same prefix. There's no way to route, route it properly. 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, if you're interested in some of the, the details we don't have time for here, uh, you can either catch me later or ping me, IRC, uh, email, whatever. Uh, we don't have, like, uh, so much time. We have good time, but not so much. So what I would uh, expect to see in the result as well is uh, the priority, the relative weight, and relative priority of uh, the written results. Uh, sometimes it would be uh, good enough to just, uh, just get the results in, in the good priority order. But sometimes I would really want to store the information and work with that later, so, so it's, it's pretty useful. I would really like to see uh, information about security, because it's uh, most very often uh, the answer comes from DNS, and uh, there's, there are some security features, and I would like to have, uh, have the knowledge of uh, the level of the security of, of the result. It actually may be validated, not validated. There are other, other options. I don't want to go into the details here. Um, I'm pretty much uh, interested in IF index which is uh, in IPv6 stored as scope ID for link local addresses. But um, I don't think uh, we need to limit it to link local addresses, because it may be sometimes useful even for, uh, for addresses that are not link local. You don't need it to connect. Uh, you would, you would uh, usually filter it out when, when calling the, the connect uh, system call. Uh, but uh, sometimes it may be useful. And definitely, I would like, if, if at all, I have some internal caching in the applications, which I would usually like to avoid. But if it's there, I would like to know how long does the data, uh, how long is the data valid. And uh, there are other features which are not related to, to the input and output parameters, which I would uh, expect from a, from a a good uh, library that resolves names for me. Uh, it, for me, it should actually be able to connect me to the service, or at least be as helpful as possible. And uh, it's um, usually you need to do this in the application. You need to query, query the address information, and then you need to do some magic to connect properly. Uh, it was uh, really easy with uh, IPv4 only, because you just got the records and, and connected. Uh, in case of failure, you could, you could use uh, another address uh, in the list and so on. Uh, but with IPv4 and IPv6, there are uh, some scenarios where you really want to do something, something a little bit different. Like connect it to both IPv4 and IPv6, and pick the first one that succeeds, and stuff like that. Uh, usually, it's, it's called happy eyeballs, but that word is used in, in a couple of s different circumstances. Um, and I would actually expect to have uh, happy eyeballs not only for the DNS part, but also for the connection part. So you can just say, I want to be connected, and you get connected in some reasonable way, and you don't need to read RFCs to... Uh, in order to uh, write a good network application. So is there anything uh, I could add regarding the happy eyeballs? Uh, of course, there's no time for like deep uh, Inspection of the feature, but um, yeah. So at least some example. Some example would be good. Um, when you're connecting to uh, some service, which is on IPv4 and IPv6, and you know that now nowadays uh, almost nobody uses IPv6. So very often the service is blocked on firewall from the IPv6 communication because uh, in, in the last like two or three months, uh, 
Nobody tries to connect to it with IPv6, so nobody realizes that there's a problem. And you go and connect to the website, for example. Um, you start with IPv6 because it's preferred. And uh, you are waiting for it to reply, either with some uh, with success or with some error from the network. But because it's firewall, it's, 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 it's basically dropped, uh, you don't get any answers. So you're waiting, uh, typically up to one minute or something, and then uh, you connect uh, via IPv4. So it's a very typical, uh, very typical symptom. If you go to some place, you want to connect somewhere, and, and it takes a minute to connect. Then you click uh, some link, and it takes another minute to get to, to the other web page. So that's, that's, that's the typical one. And API balls are basically about uh, starting uh, the connections in parallel and uh, pick up the first, uh, first successful one with some, some tweaks, some details, but it's, it's uh, the basic use case. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Um, actually, I, I somewhere I read that uh, eyeballs is some nickname like for the user, yes. and uh, the user really can't be happy when he's waiting one minute for a website. So, so that's it. So so far so good. There are some limitations of uh, get this info. I did not really carefully specify which limitations are because of the API of getters info, uh, which are because of the NSWitch API, which is even more stupid than, than the public one, uh, and which are just the implementation problems that, which can be fixed. Uh, I have some information about this. Uh, there will be a link to a website uh, at the end, uh, part of FedoraWiki, uh, where uh, there's a little bit more information on that, and I will be improving in, in the future as well. Uh, but uh, let's go for uh, the alternative solutions or alternatives you can use in the applications. Uh, because uh, for me, the ultimate goal is to find some solution that uh, anyone can use uh, to just uh, say, I want to be connected somewhere, and so be it. So he can concentrate uh, on, on the application data and application stuff and not, not on network stuff. Many projects decided to use DNS libraries. I'm thanking them as one. There, there's a lot of them. Uh, and uh, for me, there are a couple of main, advantage, main disadvantages uh, that really uh, show me that this is not a good way for a typical, uh, typical Linux application. It only supports DNS. I want to be supporting uh, link local names via multicast DNS or other protocol. I want to be supporting uh, other stuff. Uh, DNS is not everything. Uh, and uh, second, when I was talking about all the happy eyeballs and stuff, uh, the libraries uh, most typically just provide the DNS layer. So you can, you can perform the DNS queries, but they don't do all this magic for you. So usually the applications have, have some layer on top of it or use some, some uh, network uh, framework which does that, uh, and so on. So that's it. <coughs> so basically, for me, this is not a solution. For someone, it can be. Many projects live with that, so, so uh, sometimes it's, uh, it's OK. If the projects are closely related to DNS or some service, uh, uh, some service which, which rely, relies heavily on DNS that suits you okay. Uh, there's Getters Info A by Ulrich Depper. Uh, it's, quite lo it's quite old um, and uh, it's uh, very difficult to use because it's, ba it's uh, based on SIG events, which are events that can, uh, that can start new threads. You register uh, your thread function and, and, and the other stuff. Uh, with uh, the library. It's in glibc, actually. Uh, it has some function to cancel the transaction, but the documentation says uh, that uh, you can't cancel the transaction if it's running. 
So when when would you like to cancel a transaction if it's not running? It's uh, it's uh, like the main use case is to cancel something that's running, not something that's not running. So it's it's basically non non cancelable. Uh, there's AsyncNS by Leonard Petring, which solves uh, solves the problem by simply wrapping getters info uh, in a reasonable wrapper for applications. But it does not do all that magic. Uh, does not uh, does not improve the input and output parameters. So it's basically uh, an improvement, but just a small one. There's system D resolve which seems to be basically async and as uh, copies to uh, systemd3. So there's nothing, nothing new uh, for us yet. And uh, there's uh, mylarb, which uh, primary goal was for, uh, for uh, testing. Then I realized uh, it could be actually useful. So, uh, so here are the requirements I come up with before, uh, before actually starting. I wanted to have file descriptor based API uh, for the front end, like for the applications, and as well for the back end so it works uh, all the way through without any threads started by the library, without any processes started by the library but uh, at the same time allowing uh, the applications to use threads uh, without limitation. And the other, uh, the other big requirement is to make input and out output extensible. Because I don't know what all is needed. I have some things I would like to see on the input. I have some of them I would like to see on the output. Basically, those are stuff I was already talking about. Um, and you can just uh, uh, see them later uh, if you download the presentation. So this is basically what you what what we are already talking about. What's there and uh, and something on the top. And based on all those requirements, which we basically uh, have some some image of already or some picture of already. Uh, I started a project called NetResolve. There's some name clash with something else, so it may be eventually re renamed, but uh, for now it's, it's called so. And its uh, main goals its main goals were to first show that it's possible to make the library working properly, because uh, nobody actually believes it's possible with glibc because of the code and the process it's as well. Uh, so I started uh, in a separate tree and uh, started just just uh, making a library uh, useful for tests at least. Uh, it provides testing tools, which in turn can be used uh, for glibc as well. It can be actually used by applications already, um, and my plan is uh, to uh, alongside improve the glibc code. So it's not like a guerrilla project, it's, uh, it's something that fits uh, into the ecosystem. Uh, the basic architecture is, uh, I think, the same as all asynchronous uh, name resolution libraries, including the DNS ones. We have some sort of a channel which we start and configure, and uh, with that channel we can, we can uh, send queries or ask about uh, DNS names, and uh, so you can have some picture of how it can be used. Uh, there's a testing tool, uh, and I, I used a couple of examples for the presentation. The first one asks about some host name, and it returns you the list of addresses with protocol port and stuff, stuff like that zeroed out. You can actually already try this. You can build it on your system and, and try it if, if you're interested. Um, second one uh, is looking for a, for, um, okay, for a host and service, which is like the typical use case of get this info, node name and serve name. Uh, the third one uh, is about this, the SRV records, because those are explicitly turned on. That's the Big minus s, or I could use the I could have used the long name actually. 
And uh, here I'm adding the protocol TCP because the SRV records are like uh, underscore XMPP client dot underscore TCP dot uh, .org. So it's easily assembled. And then uh, not only the S SRV record is used, but also the, uh, the IPv4 and the IPv6 addresses are resolved. So you get the final result. And as well, uh, you can use uh, special backends I prepared, uh, and that's uh, getAddressInfo. That means NetResolve simply uh, calls uh, getAddressInfo instead of the internal uh, plugins that, that uh, access the various sources. And you can see uh, the differences in the results. You can also use uh, NSS backends, those that are used by getAddressInfo directly. So we can, you can ask the DNS uh, glibc uh, backend directly and so on. The same for like, files, or you can you can uh, chain those uh, plugins so uh, so it uses uses them in that order. It's similar to etc and a switch uh, configuration. If you want to get more information about this project, find it on sourceware.org where glibc is. It's called NetResolve. And uh, all, the, all the public information is uh, currently kept in README and to do. Basically, you can see what's, what's there and what will be there, or what probably will be there. So thank you for listening. You can, uh, you can use uh, this address to get the slides. Uh, you can use uh, those other addresses to uh, find more information. Thank you very much. Do we have time for questions or not? Yes, we have two or three minutes. Okay, any questions? Sure. With the ultimate implementation, you don't call it get address info anymore because it will break all existing tools. Yes, with my implementation specifically, there's no call to get the this info. Okay. Unless you... How do you call and when do you put it into GLC? Um, I actually expect to, to have a, a new API, but we'll see how that works out. It's uh, actually possible. Uh, there's already... Uh, like, get this info and related functions implemented uh, using this library. So you can actually use it to uh, replace. You don't even to recompile. You can use just just uh, pick up uh, an existing application, and via LD preload, if if you know how that works, uh, you can you can use uh, uh, a library that is part of the project, and you can you can just replace this info with uh, that. Yes, sort of, yes. Uh, I don't know whether it's possible yet. So it's like you're asking about, about distant future. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, it's no longer active in the project. Uh, but uh, the main reason is that it's new API and it's not available on, on other systems. So it might be actually more useful to start, uh, to start with standardization of some API that is more flexible than getters info. It may not be specifically the API I'm using here, uh, but um, something that would be uh, something that would be useful, and I would then use the, the code to implement any API. Uh, yes, uh, that's, that's because uh, what Lennart did is a simple layer over getting this info, so it's just the very top layer of, of what we are talking about here. I was actually talking to Tom Gunderson, who created NetworkD, because I've seen that he's split out the stuff in systemd and, and uh, uh, he created the file for systemd resolve. So we'll be talking about some, some stuff. I don't know yet what, what will come out with it. Yeah. 
yeah, yeah. I was actually afraid they, they have already done something similar, but when I look at the code, it's still the good old async NS. So we can, uh, we can, we can talk about it and see, see what happens. Okay, thank you for the questions. Uh, thank you for listening. We are moving to the next speaker.